So I would like to welcome all of you to meet my dear friend, Sarah. She is someone that I've known for many, many years. And she now currently works as faculty at the University of San Francisco. And she also had been working with the University of Colorado as a Gene Watson scholar. Is that what, is that what it was? What was the name of your? Um, the Watson Carried Science Endowed Chair. Watson Carrying Science Endowed Chair. She's a fellow of the American Academy of Nursing and her specialty has been really working in the area of research of reflective practice. One thing that Sarah has to offer that I find her unique among all the speakers is she's someone who has a very contemplative spirit, a tremendous amount of scholarship and understanding of where nursing is going. She also has this incredible spirit of being able to be someone who is visionary and is conscious. And I'm so happy to introduce you to her because she has, she has gifts and she has so much to offer us just by listening to her voice. So I wanna thank you for listening to this interview and I wanna introduce you to Sarah. Hi Mary, it's such a pleasure to be here today and all those beautiful words you said about me I they reflect right back on you I um, have had such uh, much joy and pleasure and an honor to work with you and get to know you over the years and that you're having the vision for this work and you're carrying it out you're the perfect person to do it so thank you thank you so the intention is is how can we as nurses today find our voice and how can we manifest the future? And I'm asking nurses who have been in leadership positions, who are, have the ability to have the consciousness and vision of what can come forth. So I wanna ask you, what is your vision of how you see nursing evolving from this day and honoring this present moment to where we can possibly, where is our destiny and how can we create our destiny? Yeah, that's a great question, and the timing couldn't be more perfect. As you know, Mary, I moved to California two years ago to continue my spiritual journey, and that would help me discover the answer to that very question. And what I discovered is that my aspiration is to invite nurses from around the world um, to revisit their inner landscape and um, be a sanctuary and a place where all nurses can help discover um, the answer to that within themselves because we are all already whole and complete and oftentimes we work in a system that is um, so focused on fixing and mm -hmm. and helping uh, and doing that we lose sight of the value and the absolute necessity of being. And it's only when we're in a being space that we can connect to our inner resources, our spirituality and feel whole and heal. So tell me how it's, how does, how do you implement that in your own personal life? What are some of the ways in which you can, you ground that into your, into who you are as a nurse? Mm -hmm. You know, for me, it's creating my own inner sanctuary and moments of sanctuary, whether they occur in a chapel or reading a book or in nature, taking a walk or working in community with um, healers who are, um, I've been working for um, 16 months now with a shamanic healing group. Um, and so both renowned healers and other healers are on their own path along with me. Those are all ways that we can um, broaden our spiritual inner landscape. Right. Mm -hmm. And how do you, I think that's really wonderful because um, the inner, to move ourselves from the inside, you know, one of the things, one of the greatest frontiers, like, you know, is like the inner world is mm -hmm. this infinite world of possibility. And if we really understand that inner world and on that path, that reflects what the potentialities, mm -hmm. how to activate our potentials in the outer world. Can you tell me about how that is for you? Um, going from the inner to the outer? 
Um, it's beautiful. It's really what I see as my life vision and purpose is to create these concentric healing circles of nurses radiating out into communities around the world and holding space for others. And that's how we uncover our inner resources. That's how we create a safe space and a sacred space to witness and listen and hear and honor each other's hidden wholeness. And for me, it happens in community. Um, it also happens in spaces when I'm alone, but most often it happens in community where I can share the essence of what's radiating from me and coming from my heart. And if someone else speaks their truth into the center of that circle as well, those forms of sharing um, open up a broader perspective and world for both of us and all of us who are in that circle. And we all develop a deeper understanding and knowing and broaden our perspective to the point that we continually to have new ways of seeing the world, new ways of relating, new ways of opening up our humanity to uh, the broader world around us. So it's, it's the ongoing work of being in community with one another. I love your image of concentric circles. Um, one of the things you said is creating a community of concentric circles. Can you tell me more about that? Well, I think we all, in a concentric circle, in a healing circle, there is no authority. Right. There is no one in, um, in a leadership position. Right. Um, and, and everyone can um, serve. Um, the center and the whole and usually we have a, a guardian and a host for that circle but those roles are always interchangeable and moving and those circles um, can radiate out into um, our community spaces they can be held on uh, hospital units they can be held in sacred spaces within hospitals but right. why envision is that nurses and other healthcare professionals need to begin to come together in circle and work together in circle to find solutions to the complex problems in the world that have to do with health and healing and wholeness. We're being called to move beyond fixing and helping. We're, the planet around us is succumbing to all of the doing. And yes. we're, we're no longer in touch with an imbalance with with the the planet and the world around us and to come back in to balance is um, requires coming back into circle we have we're caught up in this hierarchical triangle way of being with each other and um where there's leadership at the top and others or the rest of us are, are down below and that's the doing world but right. solutions that are reading asked of us right now can only come from the being world and those come in circle those come and being in circle together yeah. so i love what you're saying come and being in circle together and creating sacred space tell me more about what you're when you're saying i the being going from doing to being explain that a little bit more how you see that and can articulate that for the listeners mm. Well, I'm engaging in healing circle work and um, work with healing circles global mm -hmm. to expand healing circles into online communities now. And um, what we do when we work in circle is we speak from our heart and not from our head. And so to speak okay. into the center of the circle is really about um, settling down into a place of reverence with in ourselves right. and creating um, a sacred time together so that we can slow down and open up and attend to what is coming from our heart because so much of what we do is coming from our head right. and the more rapid pace and the rapid cycling and the rapid world that we live in is all headspace right. and, and we've got to come into heart space to solve the complexity of problems before us. So what it looks like to me and the work that I'm learning about now is circle is to coming in to heart space and speaking from our hearts, which open us up to new conversations and new possibilities. That's beautiful. Can you talk about 
heart space. Can you articulate talking from your heart and how we know that that's what we're doing versus talking from our head? Talking from our heart is really an, an intentional practice and it usually requires either starting with a way to connect to our heart, right? It's, um, and to connect to our heart usually occurs through some sort of slowing down through meditation or a mindfulness practice, um, some period of silence. Maybe it's a poem or a poet, some poetry or some profound reading that draws us in emotionally and connects us to something deeper within us. So it creates um, a, a an openness and that occurs through um, set, setting setting the circle and um, setting the intention and it's not about speaking to one another it's about speaking into the center of the circle speaking into the center of the circle what I'd like to ask is how can in this moment I in creating this telesummit what is coming up for me mm -hmm. is honoring that is like a circle you mm -hmm. know there's a, a circle there's no hierarchy each speaker comes from a different place and what i'd like to do in my mind right now and in, in spirit space is how can we create a concentric circle in this event how can we this is a community i would like to create a community i would like to um visualize and intentionally speak to as we're listening, we're standing in a concentric circle. Mm -hmm. Each speaker is speaking from their heart. Each one of us is standing facing the center. Can you just explain that a little more to me and how we might be able to activate the concentric circle right now? Well, I think we could invite those who are watching and listening if they'd like to be part of a circle right to ask to join us and we begin to create um healing circles and online communities i think that's a beautiful manifestation and outcome of of this project i can't right. think of anything more beautiful tell me how we would do that if we decided to do that what are some specific steps we'd have to take are there groups that already exist would we co-create our own group you know i'm reaching out to as many nurses as possible mm -hmm. how would we create a a, a a concentric circle community with everyone who's listening how what are some specific steps i could take or they could take to make that happen mm -hmm. well there are um there are currently trainings going on right now through um, healingcirclesglobal.org um, that invite people who are interested in, in joining or hosting online um, healing circles to begin to do that. Those of us who are going through the training are then prepared to go out and um, expand those circles. Okay. So, um, it's something that we we could do as an outcome of this project. I I have a uh, a website and a place where we could do that if people would like to join. Um, Better together healing is um, the work that I'm going to be expanding in the world. So it's certainly a meaningful outcome that could come from this project. That's great. It's called Better Together Healing. Better Together Healing. That's beautiful. So that would be something people could tap into and become part of that community. Mm -hmm. That website will be launched in about two weeks. Fantastic. And um, we could create a list of people who would like to become part of a circle community. Right. And we can radiate that out. Yeah. That's fantastic. Because one of the things we need to do, or what I hope happens, that we do create a healing community of how we are going to spiral, you know, move into the moment, be totally present in the moment, face the center of the circle, and then how it like a galaxy. One of the mm -hmm. things is um, each person who's listening to this telesummit, for some reason has been called to make this connection. Mm -hmm. And each speaker in the telesummit is just the beginning of those of us who are speaking. Mm -hmm. 
but I really want to invite everyone to speak and create to wherever they are. Mm -hmm. So how would you in, encourage people to do that kind of work in, in different ways? Mm -hmm. I heard your way about that, but do you have other ideas that nurses, as we create these pathways of the future, of the possibilities, do you have other ideas as well? Well, I think we all have to discover our own unique gifts and talents and um, figure out what, what's driving or calling us. Really, it's a calling. Yes. For me, discovering that calling was both beginning to engage in my own spiritual practices individually and in community, but also reconnecting to the roots and discipline of nursing and understanding that this is a sacred profession. Right. This is a sacred calling and reconnecting to that, to that sacredness that, that we have always been a very, very spiritual um, profess, profession. And that has really not been fully incorporated into nursing education for a long time. And being drawn away from that has drawn us away from that calling. And currently what's going on in the world, I think we're being called back to that. Yes. And so it's really time to revisit um, the historical and roots of the profession of nursing and how we can bring the sacred uh, and the soulful and the spiritual back into the essence of nursing. And, and once we do that, it provides the space and the opportunity to discover what our unique gifts and talents are in that calling. And then we will have a way forward. And coming together in circle is one way to help um, discover that for ourselves. Yeah. Yeah. Coming together. And I really love this returning back to the sacred because that was one of the things I always felt in my practice mm -hmm. that inside the intimacy, that those intimate moments when you were touching another human being, mm -hmm. there was such a, a privilege of being a nurse as another human being, mm -hmm. to be inside the world of someone who really needed you in such a deep, profound way, whether it was whatever it was, they, mm -hmm. you know, you were able to be there for them in this one moment mm -hmm. that I felt um, like there was a reverence, like, how did I get here that yeah. I could be here for that human being? When did you discover, when did you discover in your own, own journey as being a nurse, you know, since we weren't taught it in nursing school, that it was a, a deeply noble and sacred profession? When did you discover that in your life and what's your story? Mm. Mm. Um, wow, it's a really good question. I don't think anyone's ever asked me that. Um, I think it was um, when I graduated from nursing school, I, uh, right after I graduated, I, my uncle died by suicide and the response of both my family and the, the healing, com the, the healthcare community around was of silence and um, there was no healing that occurred from that. And I was very angry and irreverent about that. And I knew that there was something um, missing, that this wasn't healing for, for any of us. Mm -hmm. And I wanted healing and I wanted um, to discover the deeper meaning and purpose of um, the sacredness of life and what's life giving and life sustaining and what's not. And so I learned really early on in a very young age that nursing um, was an opportunity to go in those deepest and darkest places. And yeah. um, it was only through, through taking those, those dark journeys into the shadows of our lives and our beings that that we can 
find the greatest light and um, and the greatest gifts that that life has to offer. That's beautiful. Thank you. So as a wisdom keeper that you are, um, and as someone who has been on a journey, and um, I really love, you know, I, I love this word wisdom keepers, and it's, mm -hmm. it comes to me from, it's greater than just being who we are. It's like that we keep the wisdom of the, of the sacred work and the deep, profound work that we're doing. Can you speak to the wisdom that you have cre that you have grown to know that you would share with the listeners? Mm. What are some of your wisdoms that you can share? Mm -hmm. I think that we all have our own unique path and um, the wisest thing we can do is um, to start down that path. And it's only one step at a time and one day at a time. But to really connect to our, our vision and our purpose and our meaning and the reason we're right here, right now in this, in this world, um, we, um, we have to start down that path. And that's, that's how we find our own wisdom because our wisdom is is within it's already there i love that dr watson says um you know information does not necessarily lead to knowledge and knowledge does not necessarily lead to understanding and understanding does not necessarily lead, lead to wisdom we have to aspire to be wise and it's a journey that we have to have the courage to go on, it requires releasing of things that no longer serve us. It requires looking at the shadows within us um, and um, connecting to our ancestral roots and the unique gifts and talents that, that we have to offer. And, right. then, and then, and then re, rebirthing into a new version of ourselves and continuing that, that healing circle. That's, 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 that's really wonderful. And I really feel that not only are we on an individual journey to step down that path, but professionally we're on a journey to step down that path. Mm -hmm. And that as we create these circles that you're talking about, the circles are a step that we can create as a collective. Absolutely. And I love this idea of it's going to take us one day at a time, one step at a time, one, it's a journey for the future. It's gonna come when it comes. And each one of us is doing our own personal work, but we're also doing the work. We're not alone. Mm. We have each other. And um, it's, an, it's a process of reinventing reinventing mm -hmm. ourselves and reinventing our profession and reinventing whatever the present is going to be next. We, you mm -hmm. know, it's that unfolding of the mystery. Exactly. And to, to really appreciate that we are better together. When nurses are come together and um, work together and play together and celebrate life together and joy and sorrow, it is, it is, Beautiful, beautiful. Nurses are better together. And we, there are over 20 million of us in the world, nurses and midwives. And if we were all to come together and share that common voice and common concern for health and healing and humanity and, and the sustainability of our planet, what I can't even begin to imagine the infinite influence that we could have it it it's anything's possible right it gives me goosebumps yeah. it's amazing anything's possible so your website is better together better together healing better .com. together healing dot com mm -hmm. Wow. I just want to say I want to I want to let everybody know that I think that's a fantastic next step for us to take for all of us to 
join your work. You know, I invite everyone who's listening to this telesummit to join with Sarah to do this work and I'll meet you there, you know, wherever she's going, I'm going to, I'm going to join you. <laughs> and I also just want to say, Sarah, how much I appreciate the guidance and the light and the inspiration that you've been in my personal life as a dear friend. Um, Sarah and I went to a sacred place together. We went to Petra in Jordan once together. We spent mm -hmm. the whole day together and it was absolutely one of my peak experiences mm -hmm. in my life. And we shared that day. And, and I also want to say how much just I appreciate you doing this work in the world. And I hear you going deeper into new spaces of where, you know, the, how we can take this work and reclaim the reverence mm -hmm. of what we're doing as nurses. Yeah. Yes, absolutely. We are a sanctuary. So are so many people in the world and um, a collective sanctuary for healing. It's a collective sanctuary for healing. And we are better together. We are. <laughs> Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Thank you so much. Where are you? You're in California? Are you out on I'm your in, porch? I'm in San Rafael, California, out on the porch. Yeah. That is great. I can't imagine a better place to be. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank Sarah. you. Thank you for your work. This is amazing. You I love amazing. it. I'm having such a gift. It's a, it's a, such a gift for me. I just am amazed. I'm ha I'm meeting so many beautiful people, and I'm so inspired. So thank you so much, Sarah. Thank you. All right. Appreciate take care. you. Bye. Bye. -bye.